Jai, Om Vishnu Pachala Bhakti Pavan Janarda Maharaj Ki Jai. Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Yatha Paragamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Rana Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishikam Vitam Sya Oma Jnana Timaranda Sya Gyanajana Shilakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasma Shi Guravenama Gurva Bistam Supurak Gurva Bistam Supurakam Guragana Rasisha Sambhushitam Chintya Chintya Samasta Veda Nepanam Shi Rupa Patanagam Govinda Abhidam Ujvalam Varatanum Bhaktian Vidam Sundaram Mande Vishwa Gurancha Divyad Bhagavad Prem Noe Bijapranam Devam Divya Tanum Suchanda Baranam Balarka Chelan Shitam Sandra Nanda Puram Sarekavaranam Vairagya Vidyam Bodhim Sri Siddhanta Nidhim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Baram Banditam Shubaram Mareka Sharanam Nyashi Svarashidaram Bansha Kaupata Rubya Sakripa Sindhu Bhavichaha Patitanam Paveni Bio Vaishnava Bio Namo Namaha Namo Mahamaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Ura Tavishe Nama So we're hearing from Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur Commentary uh, or translation rather by Translation by Sarva Bhavana Das And today I'm going to I, I know I read this yesterday, but I'm going to uh, read again the beginning of chapter 3 of the Antya Leela, Deliverance of Sarvabhoma and the Journey to West Bengal. O glory to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the repository of all transcendental qualities. He is the life and soul of Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Swarup Damodar Prabhu. He is the supreme actor of Vaikuntha and an ocean of compassion. He is the crest jewel of all sannyasis and the true friend of the destitute. Please hear attentively these narrations of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya as recorded in the Antya Leela, the concluding pastimes. Sri Chaitanya's pastimes are the purest concentrated nectar derived from pure nectar, for a taste of which Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma are always hankering. Therefore, these pastimes, when heard with proper faith and attention, become the source of great spiritual pleasure for everyone except the sinful miscreants. Hearing these esoteric subjects will certainly bestow upon one the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. In this chapter, we find the Lord wishing to remain incognito, not, reveal, not revealing his real identity. Once the Supreme Lord decides not to assert himself and to go unrecognized, then who can know him? One day the Lord sat with Sarvabhoma in a secluded place. The Lord said, O oh, respected sir, I want to open my heart to you. Although I have come to Puri to see Lord Jagannath, my main concern was to meet you. Lord Jagannath is not going to speak with me, but you can sever the bonds of my material attachments. Sri Krishna has fully empowered you to distribute love of Hari love of Hari. If you want, you can give that transcendental love to me also. Therefore, I am taking shelter of you, so you kindly do what is most beneficial for me. What duties must I perform and how should I act to avoid falling into the deep dark well of material existence? Please advise and guide me in every way because I have fully surrendered myself uh, unto you. In this way, the Lord spoke to Sarvabhoma, deluding him fully. Sarvabhoma could not fathom the words and intentions of the Lord. He began to explain to the Lord the religious duties of man. He said, I appreciate everything you have spoken, to say the least, the lofty heights of devotional realization that you have revealed are wonderful. You have indeed been blessed by the grace of Sri Krishna. However, being such an intelligent person, what prompted you to take to the renounced order of life? Please try to analyze and understand what actually is to be gained by taking sannyas. The first thing that happens upon taking sannyas is that the person is immediately attacked by pride. By holding the sannyas danda, he thinks that he is empowered 
with special knowledge, and from then on never folds his hand or bows his head to anyone. When he meets a very saintly soul, who according to the Vedas is to be worshipped by smearing the dust from his lotus feet upon one's head, the sannyasi simply offers respect to him, not feeling any reason to be cautious. This sort of arrogance is not at all healthy. Try to understand the point from the verse of the Bhagavatam. Aware that the Supreme Personality of God resides alongside the soul in every body, one should offer dandavat obeisances to every living being, even to dogs, cows, mules, and outcasts. This is the proper standard for a Vaishnava, and only a charlatan devotee will act otherwise. The only thing one gains by taking sannyas is that one shaves off his shika and receives respect and honor from many persons. This certainly is one big waste, and thus the next disaster is that he loses all good sense. So in the time of Mahaprabhu, it was mostly the sannyas, uh, acharyas were mayavadis, and part of taking sannyas would be taking off one's brahman thread and shaving one's sika. The living entity is meant to worship and serve the Supreme Lord. But instead of that, the sannyasi calls himself Narayan, the Supreme Personality of God. When the human soul in the form of a fetus is cramped up in the mother's womb, the Supreme Lord comes to his rescue and by the Lord's grace, the entrapped soul gains proper knowledge and intelligence. Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, and Ananta Sesh and Lakshmi Devi are all trying to serve the same, the same Supreme Person personality. In fact, even after being engaged in his service, they hanker for more. The whole cosmic process of creation, maintenance, and annihilation is undertaken by the servants of that same supreme person. Yet the sannyasi has no shame in calling himself Prabhu, Lord. When lost in deep sleep, he does not even know who he is, yet still he shamelessly thinks that he is Narayan, the supreme godhead. Of course, the Mayavadi sannyasis they, they called themselves Narayan. Uh, that was part of Shankaracharya's philosophy. But the Vaishnava sannyasis would say, uh, may, your, may you always think of Krishna. That's what, and as soon as they uh, said that, people would know that they are different from the Mayavadi sannyasis. But by appearance, they appeared uh, with the same outer appearance of the same sannyas, uh, clothes and danda, like that. The Vedic literature declares that Sri Krishna is the supreme father of the entire creation. One who serves and obeys the father is a good son. The Bhagavad Gita states, I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. Now listen to what the Supreme Lord Narayan himself tells Arjuna about sannyas in the Gita. One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and acts strictly according to scriptural injunctions is called a yogi or sannyasi, not he who lights no sanctified fire and performs no work. So Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, he's starting his talks by telling Mahaprabhu that uh, praising Mahaprabhu, but telling Mahaprabhu that it is a mistake for him to have taken sannyas. For one reason, he, he considers that Mahaprabhu is too young to be a sannyasi. Mahaprabhu uh, took sannyas after his 24th year, so Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya sees him as being too young for being a sannyasi. Further, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one should act only for the sole purpose of pleasing Sri Hari. One's education should be meant solely to elevate one to Krishna consciousness. The Supreme Lord Hari is the super soul and guide of all living entities who have accepted material bodies. He is the supreme controller and cause of this material world. After these scriptural evidences, if one still insists upon saying that Shankaracharya is not the not of the same opinion, then I will quote something that Shankaracharya himself has composed, which indicates his desire to serve the Lord. He said, O Lord, although the Jeevan Brahman 
are non-different qualitatively. I, I, a jiva soul, am always under your control and my existence depends entirely upon you and not vice versa. There is no qualitative difference between the oceans and its waves, but still the waves exist because of the ocean and not the other way around. But the ocean doesn't exist because of the waves. Therefore, the Supreme Lord Krishna is the Father and this cosmic manifestation belongs to Him. He is a maintainer of both the material and spiritual realms. One who does not worship and serve the Father is to be ostracized. This is the essence of the words of Shankaracharya. Without a sincere probe into the actual meaning of his words, what is the use of shaving one's head? This will simply result in further distress. So Sarvabhoma is still from, we can understand from the context that he is a follower of Shankaracharya, but at the same time, he concludes that Shankaracharya in many commentaries uh, talks about the uh, Supreme Lord as Narayan or, or Krishna. So he recognizes his existence, but he doesn't differentiate the jiva from Brahman. The sannyasi should utter the name of Narayan incessantly with loving devotion, but without this devotional attitude, there is no advantage in becoming a renunciant. Consequently, I asked you why you have embarked upon this idea of becoming a sannyasi. If you want to deliver the world by distributing the science of devotional service to Sri Krishna, then what compunction drove you to shave off your shika and discard your Brahman thread? If you argue that great spiritual stalwarts like Mad Madhavendra Puri also became mendicants, shaving their hair and so on, then I will reply that you are not yet of age to accept the renounced order. These stalwarts took sannyas only after three quarters of their lives had passed and after they had relished enough of social life. Whereas you have just entered the youth, youth of life, how can you justify taking sannyas? How can the renounced order help you to advance in spiritual realizations, in spiritual realization, considering the devotion you already possessed, you already possess, as I saw manifest in your person? All these ecstatic symptoms of love of Krishna are rarely achieved, even by the great yogis. Then why did you opt, opt to be misled by illusion? Sri Chaitanya was very pleased to hear the science of devotional service as explained by Sarvabhoma. The Lord said, O oh, respected Sarvabhoma, please do not consider me to be a sannyasi. I have shaved my head and given up my Brahman thread, leaving home and family only because the pangs of separation from my beloved Krishna were becoming unbearable for me. Therefore, do not look upon me as a sannyasi. Rather, I pray to you to be merciful so that, I, so that I may develop attachment for Krishna. The Supreme Lord had desired to put his own devotee into such illusion. In other words, Mahaprabhu is putting Sarvabhoma, his own devotee, into illusion. How then could this poor servitor know the truth? If the Lord himself does not reveal himself, then who is able to know him as he actually is? Yet when his devotee speaks, even without proper knowledge of the actual situation, still the Lord is greatly pleased. So the Lord was pleased with Sarvabhoma, but Acharya, even though he, uh, he didn't have actual knowledge of what is the situation, that Mahaprabhu is, is the Lord himself. The Lord is always engaged in performing unlimited pastimes with his devotee servitors. In fact, he advents in the material world only for the pleasure of his devotees and to reciprocate the devotional mellows with them. To the, to the degree the devotee surrenders unto Sri Krishna, the Lord responds willingly, giving of himself. He always favors his devotees and thus he is known throughout the creation as Bhakta Vatsala. Who else other than his dear servitors could influence the Lord to act in this way? Sri Chaitanya looked at Sarvabhoma and smiled, but Sarvabhoma was still very much under the spell of the Lord's illusory energy, and so he failed to fully comprehend his words. Sarvabhoma said, 
Your status as a sannyasi is certainly more elevated than mine. According to the scriptural injunctions, you are worshipable, and I should be the worshiper. It is not fitting that you should praise me. That would make me an offender, the Lord replied. Please do not deceive me further in this manner. I have fully surrendered to you. In this way, the Supreme Lord Gaurasundar played with his servitor. Who can fathom the transcendental pastimes of the Lord? The Lord again spoke to Sarvabhoma. I have a great yearning to hear explanations of the Srimad Bhagavatam from you. All the doubts that assail me can be allayed only by you. Sarvabhoma replied, I'm well aware that you have deep and mature understanding of all the scriptures. What purport from the Bhagavatam is unknown to you. Yet I realize that it is the nature of noble and cultured devotees to discuss amongst themselves about the science of devotional service. Now tell me, please, which portion of the Bhagavatam seems to create confusion in you? In you? I will try my best to explain. The Lord of Vaikuntha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, smiled quietly and recited a verse from the Bhagavatam. Those who are self-satisfied and unattracted by external material desires are, on the other hand, attracted to the loving service of Sri Krishna, whose qualities are transcendental and whose activities are wonderful. Hari, the personality of God, is called Krishna because he has such transcendentally attractive features. So this is known as the Atmarama verse. By the Lord's grace, Sarvabhoma then began his dissertation in the presence of Sri Gaurasundar, who is the Lord of the goddess of learning and speech, Mother Saraswati. He explained the real meaning of this verse as, as follows. The essential truth is loving devotional service at the lotus feet of Krishna. Those persons who are fully realized souls and are free from all material hankerings and bindings become attracted to surrender at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. This evidences the extraordinary potency of Sri Krishna's qualities and their all attractive and transcendental nature. Such liberated souls are constantly glorifying the pastimes and qualities of Krishna. On the other hand, those who disregard the transcendental nature of Sri Krishna in his service are doomed to annihilation. Sarvamoma was absorbed in the discourse that he was giving. He offered 13 different expositions on the same verse and finally fell silent, saying, I am unable to go further on this subject. So he's explaining that Marama verse that all souls are attracted to Krishna. The Lord smiled again and said, each one of your delineations is correct. Now I will also give my explanations. Please judge if they are accurate or not. Sarvamoma stared, stared, uh, with one, stared wonderstruck at the Lord. Sarvamoma stared wonderstruck at the Lord. Any further elucidation on this subject is beyond human power. Yet the Lord's annotations were his own and original, and never before had they been expounded. Sarvabhama, still in a state of shock, thought, these words must have emanated from the mouth of the Supreme Lord himself. After his explanations, the Lord roared like thunder, and becoming absorbed within himself, he manifested his wonderful six-armed form. The Lord spoke, Sarvabhama, now what do you say? Do you think I am qualified to be a sannyasi? Do you not consider me a sannyasi in your heart? I have come here to see you. Many lifetimes you have spent in my service and great, with great devotion. So I have come here personally to present myself before you. I have incarnated, I have incarnated specifically to initiate the Sankirtan movement. Know for certain that I am that Supreme Lord who is the cause of the entire cosmic manifestation. You have always been my unalloyed devotee, so I have come especially to see you. I have come to protect my devotees, the saintly souls, and to destroy the demoniac forces. Allay your fears now and glorify me. Sarvabhoma saw this most wonderful six-arm form, Shadbuj. Sarvabhoma saw this most wonderful six-arm form, more dazzling than a million suns, and fell swooning in uncontained ecstasy. The Supreme Lord Gorachandra continue to roar loudly, still exhibiting his six-armed form. Within, the Lord was very pleased with Sarvabhoma, and placing his hand upon his head, the Lord said, Arise, 
The divine touch upon his head awakened Sarvabhoma, yet the feeling of extreme bliss had stunned him and he could not speak. The Lord, an ocean of munificence, placed his lotus feet on the heart of Sarvabhoma. Sarvabhoma, finding the most precious treasure within easy reach, wrapped his arms around the Lord's lotus feet in a tight clasp. With pure joy gushing from his heart, Sarvabhoma said, Today I have captured the thief that has stolen my heart. He broke down in tears, crying like a child. He had found a treasure sought after even by the goddess of fortune, Rama, Rama Devi. Words now poured out of Sarvabhoma's mouth. O Lord, Krishna Chaitanya, you are the Lord of my life. Please look upon this worthless wretch with compassion. I am so sinful that I dared to try to teach you religious principles, not knowing that you yourself are the transcendental cause of all causes. O oh Lord, who is there, even the most powerful mystic, who is not mesmerized by your illusory potency? So what effort is required to put me into illusion? Yet now, my Lord, please grant me undeviating devotion at your lotus feet. So he's saying, it doesn't, I'm a, I'm a fallen soul. It doesn't require any effort to put me into illusion. Yet now, my Lord, please grant me undeviating devotion at your lotus feet. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the Lord of my heart. You have appeared from the womb of the Divine Mother, Sri Sachi Devi. You are the life and soul of everyone, the protector of the Vedas, the Brahmins, the pious, and the religious principles, and the supreme autocratic Lord of all material and spiritual planetary systems. You possess an eternal form full of knowledge and bliss, and you are the invaluable crown which wondrously decorates the sannyas order, the saintly Sarvabhoma. Endowed with transcendental intelligence, glorified the Lord with the choicest of verses. He continued eulogizing. May my heart, like the bumblebee, be deeply attack, attracted to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, who has manifested himself in this present incarnation as Sri Krishna Chaitanya, only to rejuvenate the path of devotional service unto himself, which due to the passage of time has become neglected and almost lost. Again, he sang, I take complete shelter of the Supreme Absolute Lord, who is unrivaled, the cause of all causes, and is the most munificent personality. He has advented as Sri Krishna Chaitanya to teach humanity the science of renunciation, knowledge, and devotion to himself. A hundred verses, sublime incantations, cascaded out of the lips of Sri Sarvabhoma as he held on to the lotus feet of the Lord. He continued, My Lord, you have appeared simply to liberate the fallen souls, so kindly deliver this fallen wretch. I have been bound up by your illusory potency, Maya, in the chains of material education, wealth, and high birth. How then could I know you as you really are? Thus I beg you for one favor, O Lord of the universe, that my mind and heart become completely absorbed in you without deviating even for a minute. All your activities are inconceivable and transcendental. Thus they are incomprehensible to all unless you personally reveal them. You have accepted the transcendental wooden form of Sri Jagannath. Thus you are now sitting in Nilachala, mercifully enjoying the foodstuffs offered by your devotees. Yet actually it is yourself as Sri Krishna Chaitanya who offers the foodstuffs to yourself as Sri Jagannath. You then mercifully distribute the prasadam to all. Moreover, you cry in separation upon seeing yourself and become mad with love, attracted by, all, attracted by your own form. How then may anyone understand you at all? You alone know your real self, and those devotees who know you are the fortunate souls who have been graced by your causeless mercy. Then who am I, an insignificant entity, to know you? Even Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, and other demigods fall victim to your all-powerful, deluding potency, Maya. In this way, Sarvabhoma offered many entreaties and praises, becoming suddenly eloquent by the Lord's blessing. Of course, how the Lord feels separation from himself and is showing this, which may be confusing to many persons, 
after all, Lord Chaitanya is the Chana avatar, the hidden incarnation. But Krishna Das Kaviraj in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, he's, he reveals that how, how Mahaprabhu feels separation from the Lord is because he is Krishna internally, but he wants to experience the glory of Radharani's love, and he has accepted, accepted her mood and also her um, luster, her beauty. And thus he's appeared as Sri Krishna Chaitanya, but he's internally Krishna, that is Krishna himself, and with the bhava and kanti, the mood and also the beauty of Srimati Radharani. That's how he shows that separation to himself because he's actually showing that great love of Radharani who serves Krishna in separation after, especially after the Lord left uh, Navadip and then went to Jagannath Puri. The Supreme Lord Sri Gorachandra still manifesting his six arm form, smiled benignly upon Sarvabhoma and said, Dear Sarvabhoma, you are my eternal associate. Therefore, you are qualified to see my mystic opulence. I've come to this place only to meet you because you have worshiped me for so long. All your explanations on devotional service that greatly plead, please me. You have enunciated the absolute knowledge and naturally so for why should anyone, why should anything inferior come from your lips? The 100 verses which you have just composed in my glorification, when heard by anyone, will certainly bestow undeviating devotion unto me. These verses will be famous as the Sri Sarvabhoma Shataka, Sarvabhoma's 100 verses. Whatever you have seen of me should now remain a secret, not to be discussed amongst others. At least as long as I am present upon this earth, I forbid you to reveal my position to anyone. Nityananda is very close to me. In fact, he is my second body. Serve his lotus feet with deep devotion. His character and identity are also extremely esoteric subjects. Only when I disclose their truth can anyone truly know them. After Confiding in Sarvabhoma, the Lord withdrew within himself his mystic manifestation. Sarvabhoma became submerged in ecstasy as the truth about his Lord fully appeared within his mind. Anyone who hears of these qualities and supramundane pastimes of the Lord is immediately liberated from the entanglement of the material mesh and will finally attain the personal abode of Sri Chaitanya. These are the very confidential pastimes of Sri Krishna. Hence, one is assured of the shelter of the Lord if one hears them sincerely. In this way, Lord Chaitanya liberated Sarvabhoma and continued his Sankirtan in Nilachala. He continually performed kirtan and dancing, and thus the days and nights became submerged into a, sub, into a deluge of devotional nectar. The residents of Nilachala were freely uh, offered the rare transcendental treat of this Sankirtan ecstasy, and they responded by jubilantly singing, Hari, Hari. The people saw Sri Gorachandra and said, here is our moving Lord Jagannath. The Lord's looks mesmerized the people. They forgot whatever they were doing. Wherever he went, he was always greeted with resounding chanting of Hari, Hari. People threw themselves to the ground to bathe in the dust that bore the impression of his lotus feet. Only these most pious and fortunate souls could avail themselves of such a, of such a transcendental opportunity. Their bliss is impossible to describe. Who could resist such perfect beauty? The Lord's exquisite form stole the heart of everyone. His eyes were always decorated with cascades of tears, of loving separation and bliss. His lips were forever vibrating the Hare Krishna name. His golden body embellished with sandalwood paste and flower garlands moved with a, beauti with a beautiful leesome lis gait that would make the movements of a mad elephant look awkward. Sri Chaitanya, the Supreme Lord, although he often walked 
about in the streets was always deeply saturated in the sublime nectar of Krishna Prem and was oblivious to this world. One day, Sri Paramananda Puri returned after a long tour of all the holy places of pilgrimage. Sri Chaitanya saw him approaching from a distance and hastily got up with great deference. The Supreme Lord Gorachandra was extremely happy to see his devotee and lifting his hands in the air, he began to dance, relishing this delectable moment of meeting his devotee. After a long period of separation, he exclaimed, Hari, Hari, my eyes have seen Sri Paramananda Puri. How fortunate is my birth. How blessed is my vision. In all respects, my religious practices have now become fruitful. Today, my acceptance of the sannyas order has become a success. Sri Padmaravendra Puri has appeared before me. He rushed to embrace his beloved devotee and holding Paramananda Puri to his bosom, the Lord bathed him with tears of divine ecstasy. Paramananda Puri, looking at the moonlight beatific face of his dear Lord, entered into a state of indescribable bliss, which benumbed him, making him forget himself. Only after some time could Chaitanya and Paramananda offer obeisances to each other. Indeed, Paramananda Puri is the object of Lord Chaitanya's love. The Lord was so pleased to rediscover his eternal servitor and from now on would keep him close by as his intimate associate. Sri Paramananda Puri, having again found his dear Lord, daily served his lotus feet with ever-increasing ecstasy. Sri Paramananda Puri is a very close and dear disciple of Sri Madhavan, Sri Pad Madhavendra Puri and a devotee who always relishes the different ecstatic loving devotional mellows. A few days later, Swarup Damodar arrived and joined them. Swarup Damodar was so intimate with Sri Gorasundar that they would spend many days and nights together in the very closest spiritual confidentiality. Sri Damodar is, is also a most talented and versatile musician and his singing invariably inspired Sri Chaitanya to dance. In fact, this final portion of our book, the Antya Leela, will deal a lot with the activities of Sri Paramananda Puri and Sri Swarup Damodar. Gradually, by the arrangement of the of the Sri Chait of Sri Chaitanya, the Lord's associates and servitors began arriving in Nilachala. In addition, the associates who had taken birth in Utkala, Orissa, came one by one to join the Lord. Elevated souls like Pradyumna Misha, who was always absorbed in, in uh, Krishna Prema, Paramananda and Ramananda came and joined the assembly of great devotees. Sri Damodar Pandit and Sri Shankar Pandit came shortly thereafter. Sri Pradyumna Brahmachari also came. He was a pure servant of Sri Nishingadev. Sri Nishinga would personally manifest in his body while he danced and performed kirtan. He would look like Sri Nishinga dressed as a sannyasi. Sri Bhagavan Acharya, who like a lotus could remain unpolluted even in the midst of mundane discussion and association, also came to meet the Lord. Upon seeing their beloved Lord, the devotees became immediately free from all distress and joined their Lord in singing and dancing. The Lord of Vaikuntha, now a sannyasi, danced with his associates in divine ecstasy. Sri Nityananda was always submerged in the mellows of transcendental love of Sri Chaitanya. This would make, make him restless and cause him to act without any restraint, purely according to his own sweet will. Once, while in the temple, he rushed toward the deity of Jagannath, wanting to embrace the Lord. Even the temple sentries could not keep him in check. Then one day, he jumped up on the golden altar and entwined his arms around the deity of Balram. The sentry on duty, seeing this, came rushing at him to bring him down from the altar. However, as soon as his hands touched Nityanand in trying to arrest him, he went flying back at least seven paces. Unperturbed, Nityananda Prabhu lifted the flower garland from around Balram's neck and slipped it onto his own neck. He got down and walked majestically like the king of the elephants. 
The sentry, still bewildered, quickly got up. He thought, this sannyasi is certainly endowed with superhuman powers because no one can, can get away unpunished after touching Lord Balaram. I have the strength to keep a mad elephant in check and surely a human being cannot escape my grip. I definitely had him in a strong grip and yet the very next moment I found myself blown away like dry grass. The next time the guard saw Sri Nityananda, he approached him with utmost humility. Sri Nityananda's character is like that of an innocent child. He immediately forgave him and embraced him. A few days later, Sri Gorachandra, the husband of Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, went to live near the ocean. The beach, the beach and surrounding area were, were pleasant and idyllic. This was most pleasing to the Lord. The moon had set the night aglow with her soft aura, and the southern breeze caressed the Lord as he sat upon the seashore. His body and beatific face were exquisitely decorated with sandalwood paste, and he continuously chanted the Hare Krishna Ma mantra. The elaborate flower garland hanging loosely from his neck covered a large portion of his broad chest. He was a picture of perfect beauty. The devotees sitting around him relished his every moment. The waves were like, were like swiftly approaching white lines, foaming as they crested one after another. The Lord smiled, looking at the endless wells of churning water. The benedictions that Ganga Devi and Yamuna Devi had already received from the Supreme Lord were now being showered upon the ocean at Puri. The Lord spent the whole night performing kirtan in divine bliss. He was immersed in the nectarine ocean of his own loving mellows and danced vigorously, drowning his devotees in the flood of ecstasy. The different ecstatic symptoms like horripilation, crying, shivering, roaring, and perspiration sometimes came in waves, one after the other, and at other times all at once. All the different devotional ecstasies bloomed like the various seasonal flowers upon the Lord's body. These manifestations were only possible by the Lord's own inconceivable potency. The devotees gathered around the Lord as he danced, saturated in the mood, mood of a pure Vaishnava. The Lord felt happy in the company of his devotees and forgot his pangs of loving separation from Krishna. The Supreme Lord utilizes but a small fraction from his resources of unlimited potency to carry out his pastimes and even that small fraction is impossible for any other person to imitate. The Vedic scriptures in describing the Lord's unequivocally, unequivocally, the Vedic scriptures in describing the Lord unequivocally state that no task is impossible for the Lord to be to perform. The ecstatic devotional symptoms of love of Krishna exhibited by Lord Chaitanya cannot be repeated by anyone. There is no end to describing the glories of Sri Chaitanya. Only those who receive the grace of Sri Chaitanya are able to comprehend him with all his potencies. Therefore, taking full shelter of the omnipotent Supreme Lord will easily sever all the knots of material entanglement and distress. The Supreme Personality, who is constantly meditated upon by the most perfect, perfected beings like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, is now dancing freely with his devotees, lost in the currents of his own devotional ecstasy. I fall at the feet of those devotees who eternally perform Sankirtan with the Lord. All night kirtans on the seashore became more frequent and the Lord participated with ecstatic dancing. It was around this time that Gadadhar Pandit began to spend practically all his time with the Lord. They ate together, slept together, and went on walks together. Gadadhar Pandit served Sri Krishna Chaitanya continuously. When he read aloud, aloud to the Lord from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord entered a state of blissful trance. Gadadhar Pandit's voice always made the Lord happy, and he would always accompany the Lord to visit the different Vaishnavas. One day the Lord went to Sri Paramananda Puri's uh, mat and, and sat down close to him. Sri Paramananda Puri is very dear to the Lord, just as Arjuna is very dear to Sri Krishna. For a long time they became absorbed in discussing Sri Krishna's pastimes very confidentially. There was a well in that, 
in that mott. However, the water was not clean and drinkable. Sri Chaitanya, as a super soul, knew all the details regarding this well, so he inquired from Puri Goswami, please tell me how, how you find the water in this well. Pur, Puri Maharaj replied, this is a very unfortunate well. Its water is very muddy. The Lord sh showed immediate concern, lamenting over this in inconvenience to Puri Goswami. He said, it seems that Jagannath is being very miserly. Actually, whoever touches the water of this well will be cleansed of all sins. Therefore, by Sri Jagannath's mystic potency, the waters have turned muddy so that no one will drink or touch it. The Lord stood up and lifting his hands in the air, he began to speak, O oh Lord Jagannath, I beg this benediction from you. Mother Ganga should enter this well. Kindly, kindly instruct Ganga Devi, now flowing in the nether regions, to appear in this well. The devotees became extremely jubilant, chanting, Hari, Hari. Then the Lord, with all his devotees, returned home for the night. While the devotees slept, Ganga Devi, feeling honored to carry out the Lord's request, appeared in that well. In the morning, everyone saw the miracle. The well water had turned crystal clear. The devotees marveled and chanted the Lord's holy name, and Sri Puri, Mar and Sri Puri Goswami became almost unconscious with joy. The devotees clearly understood that the Ganga had entered the well. When Mahaprabhu heard the news, he came in upon seeing the fresh, clean water became very satisfied. He spoke to the devotees saying, listen all devotees, whoever drinks this water or bathes in it, I say truly, he will experience unalloyed devotion to Sri Krishna. The devotees responded jubilantly to the Lord's words. The Lord then bathed in and drank the water from the well with great exhilaration. He said, I remain in this world only because I am bound by Sri Puri Goswami's love. I am his property. If he wants to sell me, then he can do so. Anyone who simply sees Puri Maharaj becomes the receptacle of Sri Krishna's love. Having described the extraordinary, extraordinary qualities of Sri Puri Goswami and having blessed the well, the Lord left for his residence. The Lord, Supreme Lord takes pleasure in lauding the transcendental qualities of his devotees. Who is so mean and despicable that he will not worship such a Supreme Lord? Eternally the Lord advanced to protect his devotees and perform wonderful pastimes in their association. The Lord even does things for his devotees which in general opinion may be considered wrong as he did when Sri Rama killed Vali in support of Sugriva, his, devote, his devotee. Sri Chaitanya gladly serves his servitors Thus the Lord completely wins the hearts of his uh, beloved devotees. The Lord liked to perform sankirtan upon the ocean shores. He built his residence near the beach and stayed swimming in the ocean of devotional bliss. The ocean experienced indescribable ecstasy, having the Lord's close association, hence Sri Rama Lakshmi Devi. Sri Rama Lakshmi Devi was, was born out of the ocean. Whatever, whatever sins the residents of Nilachala may commit become completely cleansed simply by bathing in the ocean. Sri Ganga Devi calculating the value of this golden opportunity flows swiftly down from the Himalayas to merge herself into the ocean at Puri. The presence of Sri Krishna Chaitanya blessed the ocean and purified her waters. But tomorrow we'll continue with this wonderful Sri chapter three of the uh, chapter three, which is titled the deliverance of Sarvabhoma and the journey to West Bengal. We all have also been very blessed here in, in our wonderful 
Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Saraswat, Sevasham, and Sokal. Because in, during the time of Govinda Maharaj's presence and, and his visit, we were able to excavate a well here. And because there wasn't sufficient water for all the devotees, and we had a plentiful source of water, underground stream here, and the water is, everyone who comes here takes back uh, containers, or we could say vessels, filled with the wonderful water from this, from this well. It's so tasty. It has a high mineral content, but that only enhances the taste. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama <clears throat> Hari Harai Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama Jadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Nama Jadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Nama Sopa Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Sopa Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Giridari Gopinatha Maranamon Giridari Gopinatha Maranamon Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Saradana Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Saradana Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raghunath Sri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghunath Sri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raghunath Ejai Gosai Kori Charana Bandhan Ejai Gosai Kori Charana Bandhan Jaoite Vignana Shavista Puran Jaoite Vignana Shavista Puran Echai Gosai Jar Mui Taradas Echai Gosai Jar Mui Taradas Tasabar Padarinu Mora Panchagras Tasabar Padarinu Mora Panchagras Tadir Charana Sevi Bhakta Sani Vas Tadir Charana Sevi Bhakta Sani Vas Janame Janame More Abhilas Janame Janame More Abhilas Echai Gosai Jabe Braje Koila Vas Echai Gosai Jabe Braje Koila Vas Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Kori La Prakash Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Kori La Prakash Anande Bolo Hari Vaja Vrindavan Anande Bolo Hari Vaja Vrindavan Shri Guru Vaishnava Pade Majai Aman Shri Guru Vaishnava Pade Majai Aman Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Hari Nam Sankirtana Kohe Naratamodas Hari Nam Sankirtana Kohe Naratamodas Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriyas Hari Nam Sankirtana Kohe Naradamodas Hari Nam Sankirtana Kohe Naradamodas Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nita Gora Hare Bo Hare Bo Hare Bo Hare Bo Nita Gora Hare Bo Hare Bo जगन्नाथ बाबा जी महाराज की जाय रूपनुग गुरु बार्ग की जाय नामचार्य श्री लहरीदास ठाकुर की जाय श्री रूप सनातन बात रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल बद दास रघुनाथ शत गो स्वामी प्रभु की जाय प्रेम जी गो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदान हर्षि वासुदेव श्री गोरभक्त वृंद की जाय विश्व भरेन्य श्री लभक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रापद की जाय श्रील वृंदाबन दास ठाकुर की जाय श्री चैतन्य भागवत की जाय श्रील कृष्णदास कविराज गोस्वामी प्रभु की जाय श्री चैतन्य चारिताम रीता की जाय नरथम श्रीनिवास श्यामानंद प्रभु की जाय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय श्री नामदीप धाम की जाय श्री राम मायापुर की जाय सपर्षद श्री नित्यानंद प्रभु की जाय सपर्षद श्रीमान महाप्रभु की जाय श्री कोलद्वीप की जाय श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत मत की जाय सोखेव श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत सेवाश्रम की जाय गंगा देवी की जाय तुलासी महारानी की जाय भक्ति देवी की जाय श्री वृंदाबन धाम की जाय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपी गोवर्धन श्याम खन राधा कुंद कलिंदी यमुन जो की जाय श्री पुरुषोत्तम धाम की जाय बलदेव सुभद्र जगन्नाथ जो की जाय भक्ति विघ्न विनाशाय श्री नृसिंह देव की जाय भक्त प्रभार श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की जाय समवेद भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री हरे नाम संकीर्तन की जाय ऑल द असेंबल डिवोटीज की जाय श्री श्री गुरु गुरंग गंधार्विक गिरिराज जो की जाय All the assembled devotees, ki jai, gor premanande, hari hari bo. Vishnu Pasha, the Bhakti Pavan, Janardhan Maharaj, ki jai.